الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي يا رسول الله حي يا رسول الله حي يا رسول الله حي يا رسول الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مزيل له ومن يذليل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا لها هكا تكاته ولا تعمتون إلا وعنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس وهدات وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا لها الذي تسألون به ورحم إن لها كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا لها وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن قيل الحديث كتاب الله والحدي هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشهر الأمور محدثاتها وقول محدثة بدع وقول بدع ضلالة وقول ضلالة في النار. It is recited as follows that all praises are due to Allah. We praise Him. We beseech Him for help. We ask for His protection. We seek refuge in Allah from the mischiefs of our souls and from the unsuccessfulness of our deeds. In whomsoever he guides, there is no one that can lead him astray. In whomsoever he causes to err, as a result of his own actions, there is no one that can lead him aright. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam is his messenger. O oh, you who believe, be careful of your duty to Allah with the care which is due to Him and only Him. And do not die unless you are Muslim. And O oh, people, be careful of your duty to your Lord who created you from a single being and created His mate from the same kind and spread from these two many men and women. Be careful of your duty to Allah for whom you demand one of another of your rights and to the ties of relationship. Surely Allah is forever watchful over you. And O oh, you who believe, be careful of your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speak the right words to each other. He will put your deeds into a right state for you and forgive you your faults. And whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will indeed achieve a mighty success. Certainly after this, the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst 
of all things and affairs are newly invented matters in religion. For all newly matters in religion are innovations in religion, all innovations in religion are astray, and all astray will lead you directly to the hellfire. Again, my brothers and sisters, I bid you on this beautiful Juma afternoon in the words of peace, assalamu alaikum. Again, my brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that all is well again in these dire times of this coronavirus pandemic. I, I pray that all is well. And inshallah, may Allah make it easy on all the believers as well as all humanity. Today's discussion, my brothers and sisters, I will be referring to what does a believer do? How does a believer react in times of crisis? Because in determining the way in which a Muslim should deal with the time of crisis, it's very important for all of us to analyze exactly what essentially a crisis is. We should understand and know what is a crisis in the context of Islamic understanding, particularly as it relates to the Qadar, as it relates to the predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, I look at it like this. I went to Webster's Dictionary. Webster defined a crisis, and he stated that a crisis is something that indicates a pivotal period in time which a situation or a condition seems unstable, it seems chaotic, it seems liable to sudden and drastic and most often dangerous changes. Now, when Webster described this, he in reality described our situation that's occurring today, this coronavirus pandemic. And so as he describes it, in my breakdown of it is that it, is, it implies the precipice that gives way to disaster. In this case, everyone's calling this pandemic, this coronavirus pandemic, a disaster. They are calling it a catastrophe when, when every move is crucial either facilitating a healthy and progressive resolution or it's initiating the descent into what I call a catastrophe. So that's what we're looking at. Now Islamically, of course, such a situation in reality doesn't exist. I would like to explain this to all the believers. Islamically, of course, this situation does not exist. Why? Because life does not proceed so haphazardly, but rather all things occur, can only occur, according to the decree, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we understand, therefore, that a crisis basically means that circumstances seems to be other than we would like them to be. That's what a catastrophe and a crisis is. That is, that our own personal vision of how our lives and situations should be developing finds itself opposed in one way or another with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. So we therefore in reality as Muslims, we therefore in reality as believers reject the validity of what I call external crises insofar as this is understood to mean a random or a volatile unfolding of events. And rather, we should understand that the conflict that arises between our own private will and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an internal crisis of belief. Now, I said that for a particular reason. And the reason I said it is because of the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, no kind 
of calamity occurs except by Allah's leave. That's what Allah Ta'ala says. No kind of calamity occurs except by Allah's leave. And then Allah adds this statement to him. And he says, and whoever believes in Allah, Allah will guide his heart aright. For Allah knows all things. So you see, my brothers and sisters, this person that I'm speaking of who really feels this way, this person is the one who when calamity strikes, when disaster strikes, when catastrophe strikes, when coronavirus pandemic strikes, this person knows that it is from his Lord, and this person accepts it with equanimity and he submits himself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, my brothers and sisters, in other words, the contradiction between what we desire for ourselves with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires for us, it produces what I call an inner crisis. An inner crisis. That inner crisis which is a, 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 pivotal, a pivotal moment in our hearts when we can either decide to bemoan our situation or we can decide to succumb to anxiety and dissatisfaction or when we can acknowledge the superiority of Allah's will and persevere with the assurance, with the assurance, my brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in complete control that he's in complete control. And not only has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us that we will face circumstances that will be regarded as hardships, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us how to face them. He has shown us how to face them. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu sta'indu bisabri wa salat. So Allah Ta'ala says, Oh you who believe, seek help with patience, perseverance, and prayer. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek help with patience, perseverance, and prayer. For Allah is with those who what? Who patiently persevere. Who patiently persevere. And he also told us in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, be patient. For your patience is with the help of Allah. Then Allah says, no grieve over them and distress yourself not because of their plots, for Allah is with those who restrain themselves, and Allah is with those who do good. So you see, my brothers and sisters, furthermore, the believer understands that undergoing an external crisis, that is, experiencing the oftentimes sharp contrast between our expectations and the manner in which our circumstances actually develop, or when our circumstances appear dire beyond conceivable resolution, is an indication, in fact, it is Allah's favor to us. It is Allah's favor upon us. Our great companion, Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, he said that whenever Allah wills good for a person, he subjects him to adversity. So this adversity, my brothers and sisters, that we all seem to be going through, is something that's good for us. It's something that's good for us. And indeed for the one who accepts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed and the one who endures his or her trials patiently, there's only good to come from external crisis. And the greater the crisis, the greater the good. And if the believer engages their circumstances with what? With iman, with faith, okay, then that person turns out to be a good situation for that person. Imam Turbidi, radiallahu anhu, he stated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he says, verily the greatness of the reward is tied into the greatness of the trial. And when Allah loves 
the people, he puts them to trial. He puts them to trial. And whoever accepted it will enjoy Allah's pleasure, and whoever is displeased with it will incur Allah's displeasure. So you see, my brothers and sisters, crises, therefore, presents the believers with an opportunity, with an opportunity to more fully realize his or her submission to the will of Allah. In essence, to prove oneself and to thereby gain Allah's reward. And they even have some sins forgiven. It is narrated in the both Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim that the Prophet وسلم, said, No calamity befalls a Muslim, nor any weariness, nor any illness, nor any anxiety, nor grief, nor harm or harassment, even a thorn which pricks him but that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiates with it some of his sins. How beautiful is that? That we as believers get this great opportunity. Therefore we find that Iman, that faith, is the crucial equalizer in all circumstances. That Iman makes all external conditions ultimately beneficial to the believer. That believer who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree that believer who submits to his decree. And as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam says, he says, indeed, amazing are the affairs of a believer. They are all for his benefit. If he's granted ease of living, he is thankful, and this is good for him. And if he is afflicted with hardship, he perseveres, he's patient, and this is best for him. So let us be mindful, my brothers and sisters, of these dire times. Let us be mindful of the crisis that we claim that we are in. That we claim that we are in. Let us continue to praise Allah, to keep Him in remembrance. And let's continue to be persevered, be patient as Allah. Do you love those who patiently persevere in Shah? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, who has got in, who has talked through, when you be no be him when I talk a holy, when I would be let him in Shuru and Fusina, when in Sayati Amanina, the Yadi Hilla who fell a Muzilla, when we you read for the Had Allah, Allah, whom and Suman Sarbin Mohammed saw the law he was Salam, Wajaona Minhu. اللهم كم من كدر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجاون منهم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيء وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيء All praises are due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His assistance and His protection. We believe in Him and we trust in Him and we take us to refuge to Allah against the evils of our minds as well as the unsuccessfulness of our actions. In whomsoever He guides, there is no one that can lead Him astray. In whomsoever He causes to err as a result of His own actions, there is none that can lead Him aright. We ask, O oh Allah, Help those who help the religion of Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam and number us among them. And O Allah, disappoint those who try to disgrace the religion of Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam and do not make us of those people. And O Allah, exalt Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and thou did exalt Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim for surely thou art praised and magnified. And O Allah, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and thou did bless Ibrahim in the family of Ibrahim, for surely thou art praised and magnified. Again, my brothers and sisters, Allah makes a remarkable statement in the Quran. He says, yet again, when we give people a taste of our mercy, they exalt in it. When we give them a taste of our mercy, they exalt in it. 
But if any harm befalls them for all the evil that their hands have advanced in life, at once, at once they turn despondent. They turn despondent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after describing his habitual despairing of man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked this question to man after this statement. He says, have they not considered that it is Allah alone who extends abundant provision to whomsoever he wills? That it is Allah alone who restricts for whomsoever he wills? Allah says, indeed, in this there are sure signs, sure signs for people who would believe. So brothers and sisters, you see this Quranic ayah. This, we see that the Quran categorically rejects despondency and despair. And it categorically rejects it because these two also common human tendencies are in essence a problem of belief. These two oh so common tendencies are a lack of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his wisdom. They in reality come with a loss of perspective. And I said that for a particular reason. When you are despondent to something, you're not responding in the right way. You see, I looked at a a special the other day. I happened to see this, this picture on TV. And I saw, I saw the response of people who were in Las Vegas. These poor people, the, 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 the city responded to the poor people by providing shelter in a parking lot for these people. And I noticed that all of the magnificent hotels were closed. All of the Mirage and the MGM and all of these fine facilities that had great occupations that could in reality cause room and board for these people, but they chose to treat these people like as though they were rescued animals. What type of response is that to people? And then we go back 18 months. We've forgotten about our response to the fires over in Australia. We forgot about all that where the fires almost burned down half of Australia. The climate control that we we feel that we're failing to respond to. We're failing to respond to nature over in the North Pole, in which the North Pole is melting to such an extent that we have ships now flowing in the rivers and the oceans over in the Antarctica, which is all rivers now and not glaciers. Right because of the melting of the glaciers, global warming. We fail to respond to these things in which we call the nature of a loss of Hanuman Tide. You see? We are failing to respond to the 17 million people who have who were filed in the last three weeks for unemployment here in the United States of America. We have failed to respond to the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic here in the United States. We failed to respond in January. We failed to respond in November. We failed to respond in December. And look what we have now. We got over a half a million cases a coronavirus here in America. Half a million. Oh, I'm sorry, 1.6 million cases here in America. And tragically so many deaths because of our failure to be despondent. Our failure to be despondent. You see, despair, my brothers and sisters, is the side effect of what I call preoccupation with this fair weather dunya, with this fair weather world. But what modern science does not tell you 
is that the gravitational pull of this dunya is not just physical, but it's also spiritual. It's also spiritual as well. And each time we fall in a hole, we make it our grave. We make it our grave. But I want to relieve the believers. I want to relieve you, my brothers and sisters, that that should not and it is not the life for a believer. And it should not be the life for any human being. You know why? Because we are all not alone in this world. We are all not alone wandering nilly willy dilly through this murky mass of purposeness. The Quran's message to us, the Quran's message to mankind is not to become faint hearted. That's the message. Don't give up hope because these things are happening. I was listening to a young lady on the news this morning who gave up hope because her 27 year old daughter, her 27 year old daughter was taken just automatically with this coronavirus. She was helping by waiting on people at a grocery counter. And immediately when they took her in, she had full blown coronavirus. And why? She was upset, not so much so that Allah took the soul of her daughter, but she was upset because of the response, the despondency of the federal government, the despondency of her job, the despondency of protecting her while she was serving uh, the public. You see, being despondent. But Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, you see, not a single affliction befalls the earth or among yourselves or a blessing, but it is already written in a book preserved in heaven before we created it just to try you. Just to try you. And Allah says, indeed, therefore Allah is ever so easy. So know this, so that you do not grieve over what escapes you, nor exult over what comes to you. For Allah loves no swaggering boaster. You see, my brothers and sisters, it is a profoundly inspiring message. It is a profoundly inspiring message. What is the message saying? Be humble and be hopeful. Be humble and be hopeful. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in complete control. We have no control over what's going on in this life. All is perfectly planned. And all we need to do is strive. Strive, my brothers and sisters, despite of our monstrous mistakes. Strive, my brothers and sisters, despite your swerving so strikingly off the right path. You see, strive, my brothers and sisters, you see. And if you have this attitude, inculcate this mindset and character, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, ever, never let us down. Will never let us down. And I find it most significant that this is the advice that Prophet Yaqub gave to his sons after they committed an egregious act of transgression and have yet to repent. So what does he tell them? He says, and do not despair of Allah's mercy. For most surely, none despair of Allah's mercy except disbelieving people. Except disbelieving people. You see, my brothers and sisters, liberation is the implication of these verses. This exhortation to never no matter what, ever despair. Never, ever despair. Why? Because it frees our souls from a crushing burden. And that burden of the seeming randomness of life that paralyzes us with fear. The, uh, President Roosevelt said there's nothing more than fear than fear itself. And people are afraid. 
But when you have and you believe in Allah, it frees us also from another mother load called regret. Called regret, that despairing wish that we could revoke the irrevocable or we can revoke the actions past. You see? But once we free, once we are free, this Quranic exhortation to never despair, what does it allow us to do? It allows us for us to focus on what we actually have control of. Why are we going to be in despair of something we have no control over? What do we have control over? We only have control over our present actions. Over our present actions. It is, if you will, a radical empowerment of who? The individual. It is significant at both the verses from Surah Al-Rum, which is the 31st uh, ayat of Surah Al-Rum, and Surah Al-Hadid, which is the 57th ayat. It ends with an exhortation to action. An exhortation to action. Specifically, the action of giving. What did Allah say? He said, therefore, you shall give to the close relatives his every due right with kindness. With kindness. You shall give due charity to the indigent and the wayfarer. That is best for all those who desire only the face of Allah. And for it is these who are truly successful. So you see, giving in these utmost times, giving during these times of crises, you see, is an act of reliance on Allah. It's an act of trust in our futures. It's an act of belief in ourselves that we can make change that counts and overcome all of our faults, overcome all of our errors. But you see, and I, and I conclude, the people in power, those who set the cultural agenda, and they set the cultural agenda of our time. They have a fear. They have a fear of people who are hopeful. They have a fear of hopeful people. Why? Because the hopeful fear no other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fear no other than their Lord. The hopeful people free themselves from the blinding illusions of their society. The hopeful people believe that they can win. That they can win. So what do they do? They stand. They speak out. And they act. So brothers and sisters, never despair of the mercy of Allah during these crucial and dire times. May Allah bless us. May Allah keep us. So that we, my brothers and sisters, may hope. Let's make dua. Rabbina atina fi dunya sanatan wa fi l'akharati sanatan wa kina dhabana. Amen. Rabbi jauni mukama salati wa min duriyati rabbina wa taqaba dua. Amen. Rabbi rakfali wali wali daya wali mu'mina yamu yakumu hisa. Amen. Rabbina inana samina unadiya nunadiya nimani nanamunu bi rabbikum fa amina. Rabbina faqfir lana dhnubina wa qafir lana sayyatina wa tawafna mu'abrar. Rabbina wa atina wa atana ala rasulika wa la tuqsina yawmu kiyamati inna ka la tuqlifu miyad. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahayaya wa mamati lillahi wa bil alameen. La shirika lahu bi talaka umirtu wa ana mina al-muslimin. Rabbina zalamna anfusina wa anla taqfir lana وترحمنا لا نكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا فيد لنا سرما وتوافنا مسلمين ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة الذين كفروا وغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت عزيز الحكيم ربنا إنك جميع نسيل يوم لا ريب في إن لا لا يكلف مياد ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن زرياتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا ما نسكنا وتوب لنا إنك أنت تواب الرحيم ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له نشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن دين الله الإسلام الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين سلام الجمهور